Hello, Scissorin here, and welcome to another episode of Path of Exile University. Today is going to be probably an episode that will require a lot of feedback because we are going to cover all the old leagues, and there are a lot of them. So whether you're starting Path of Exile or you've been missing some of them, and there will be timestamps in the video, so if you only want to like catch up on some specific leagues, um, then uh, yeah. You can, uh, you can jump to those. A little unsure how long this episode will be. So we'll try to do like a shorter explanation of the old, old leagues and a longer explanation. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll see. And then we're doing maps after in the next lesson. So that is what we're covering today. And uh, let's begin. Should be an interesting one. How old leagues work. So, first off, let's start talking about what are leagues. Well, um, as an example, right now we have Heist, and then obviously you have the, the variations. So, if you have Heist on like Heist Softcore, which is uh, similar to Standard, right? Where if you die, there's, there's no penalty, just 10% uh, XP penalty. And on Hardcore, where you either, you know, you lose your character, it gets transferred to permanent Standard. Um, but uh, generally, there is a new league every three months, and there are solo cell phone variations of them as well. And uh, yeah, you get a new one every three months with some exceptions. Um, the current one is lasting four months. Thanks a lot, Cyberpunk, CD Projekt Red, um, screwing us over a little bit there. But they are very, very good, and that's one of the best things about Path of Exile, because every time there is a new league, there is also a huge content drop where we uh, generally every six months we'll get something that they call more of an expansion uh, where it'll be a huge update for the game, some things that go directly into standard uh, and every three months there is at least like a new league with a decent amount of content. Um, the best way to experience this content and a lot of the time the only way is to play that new league uh, and that is what the majority of the player base does. Um, they also use this as sort of a testing to see if the stuff they're experimenting with is going to go core uh, and go into the main game. So it, it's very, very fun. Um, especially the first two weeks, I would say, is generally the most fun where, uh, you know, the economy is fresh, everything you find matters, and there's so many, like, balance changes and stuff like that. When the league ends, then it'll go to the parent league. And what that means is, for example, um, Heist Softcore's parent league is standard, and uh, Heist Hardcore apparently is hardcore. So you don't lose all your stuff at the end. They're merely transferred to the uh, parent leagues there. And right now there's no difference in the leagues uh, between like, you don't have different content on Heist Softcore or Heist Hardcore. Now, most leagues do change when they like bring them into the main game. They will either either water them down, change them, sometimes take feedback from the player base and improve quality of life. Um, but most leagues are very, very different when they're uh, active and when they're put into the game. The only thing that you don't lose, like every every league is a fresh restart, except like you don't lose your microtransactions. If you bought stash tabs in Heist, you will have them the next league in whatever that's called. Um, so you like you don't lose anything like that. You only lose your in-game items uh, and stuff like that. So we're going to start off, and I'll try to keep it fairly brief where I can because I don't want the video to be 10 hours, uh, and there's a lot to cover. But we had Onslaught and Anarchy, and this is back in Path of Exile where there would be a, a different league for Hardcore and Softcore, which they are uh, not doing anymore so they can give us better content. So, uh, Onslaught League was basically um, just the fact that monsters move, attack, and cast 20% faster. Uh, and that was pretty much it. There would also be... Um, there would also be some League-specific uniques, which I'm going to explain now as well. Uh, and Anarchy had the same. Um, and the way League-specific uniques work is that you can only drop them while that mod is active. Uh, generally through the Zana map device. So I'm going to tab in game Path of Exile real quick just to show that so I can explain it better. Um, like for example, a Combs Heart, that's not League specific. It's part of the core game and can drop anywhere. 
So as long as you can drop glorious chest plates, you can drop a comb's heart. Now, for example, um, Headhunter um, or whatever the Beyond two-handed Chaos Emmer Sword, like that can only draw from Beyond uh, and the Beyond Monsters. Um, that, that's actually slightly different. There are some variations that I want to explain, which is why I'm bringing up Beyond. Beyond can also drop uh, by just having Beyond on the map, whereas Nemesis can't. So it's not always clear cut. And if you are trying for a specific uh, League Unique, you want to look it up and also maybe ask around because there are differences uh, and they're not uh, they're not cons consistent with this mechanic. Uh, but for example, Headhunter, which is a very expensive belt, you have to, have to put Nemesis on the map device uh, or you cannot have it like drop, you cannot chance it, you cannot Ancient Orbit. Uh, and it is not enough to roll like Nemesis as a map roll. That is not enough. Um, but that's basically how that works. So just be aware that there are some uniques you can't chance or Ancient Orb in your hideout. Um, and I, I do wish they were very consistent with that mechanic so it would be easier to understand. But uh, next up we have Anarchy and uh, this is where we got Rogue Exiles. And uh, that was softcore only and um, also had its own like it had some um, uh, League specific uniques as well. And they were insanely dangerous back then. Uh, they are still dangerous today. Uh, especially new ones. Whenever they say they're adding new Rogue Excels to the game, that's something you really do want to be aware of. Pretty much any new content is never perfectly balanced uh, and will very, very easily be overtuned. Um, but these two are both pretty simple mechanics. Exiles are just like, sort of like computer players that have like specific gear and try to kill you. Uh, for example, the Flame Blast Exile can be fairly dangerous. But these are pretty like simple mechanics that there's not much to understand. They're just Onslaught just makes the game slightly faster and harder, and Exiles are just like slightly more powerful mini bosses that are running around trying to kill you. Um, next up, we have Nemesis and Domin Domination. Uh, Nemesis League was hardcore only, and Nemesis is the yellow text on monsters that you've probably seen. Um, things like Volatile, um, Berserker, and there's like there's like quite a few different ones there. Um, allies cannot die is actually a really really bad one it is dangerous on its own but the the worst thing about allies cannot die is it uh, causes performance issues for most people so personally I think they should remove it until they can make it less laggy but uh, yeah nemesis modifier is very very dangerous and uh, there's so many things that can kill you there like you also have the um, not just the volatile flame blood and stuff like the big balls of fire that follow you, but you also have like the lightning mirage uh, that every time you hit it, it will um, throw lightning at your feet. That'll do loads of damage. They'll follow you around. And uh, yeah, again, not a super complicated mechanic. Um, it's just something you have to watch out for and that can be dangerous in maps, especially... If, uh, which we'll talk about in the mapping section, but you start juicing up your maps to like have more density and more monsters in your map. They can be very dangerous and it can be particularly dangerous with Beyond. Um, domination is shrines. So you'll find shrines throughout the game. These you'll find very, very early, uh, starting with things like uh, Ice Nova Shrines, Shock Nova Shrines and stuff like that, that you can click and you'll get a buff for your character for like 40 to 60 seconds. Um, one of the deadliest shrines is the Immortality Shrine because it can be really hard to click the shrine itself so you might run into the middle of all the monsters. You can't kill them because they're immortal and you might struggle to click the shrine. Um, haste shrines and crit shrines as well. Very, very dangerous. And all of these shrines come with a monster pack around them. Dom and Domination was software only. Um, there are some ways to like buff shrines as well. So... The Gull and Blunderbore will basically buff how long they last and how powerful they are. The Gull will also like give you mini shrines, which is very, very cool, unique, and interesting. Um, and just the fact that there's extra monsters around them means that it's pretty decent to have on maps. It used to be a lot stronger. Invasion and Ambush. Invasion was hardcore only and also one of the most dangerous leagues. Still, Invasion monsters are very, very dangerous today. Um... But as we mentioned, they do get watered down over time. 
um, slightly due to power creep and also due to player complaints. Um, the, the, the little leaper here actually made me quit Invasion League because it's still dangerous today because it does have a lot of chaos damage. But before, it would always just one hit you. Um, and that's something you have to worry about when new mechanics are coming in. There will be several things that can just one hit you. Um, but very, very dangerous league. And it was not rewarding. Personally, I'm a big fan of extreme danger, but with extreme reward. And something where you as a player get to choose the risk versus reward. Um... And yeah, like we have some examples here. You could get leap slammed by snipe sna spine snap. Um, there was Val detonate dead from a small little crab. Um, there was another one, Corrector Draconis, that did bear trap and kept you in place. You would basically on hardcore you either log out or you're dead. Um, and there was a porcupine that would have like a reflect aura that, yeah, you just died. It's either it was reflect aura or just really, really strong reflect, but you would just encounter it and die on a lot of builds it no longer has that type of reflect um so it's good now ambush was softcore only and uh it was strong boxes so and there are loads of like uh unique strong boxes as well that are very very exciting arguably should be more common um and something to remember here for new players is that you can roll these boxes if you find an armor strong boss, you can scour it, you can throw engineering orbs on it, you can transmute it, alterations, augments, regals, chaos, and even exalted orbs, you can also vol them. Um, and here is a mechanic we can talk a little bit more about, because it does have like synergy with other items. Um, like prophecy, like we're about to talk about later. Uh, one, one quick example of something, as an example of something interesting you can do, um, there is a sextant, that, um, which is something you put on maps, and we'll cover that a lot more in the mapping section. But there is a section that does, um, monsters that come out of strong boxes have 500% increased quantity, right? That's a decent amount of quantity. Now, there is another, uh, prophecy called Monstrous Treasure that adds either 32 or 36 strong boxes through the map, but then removes all, like, the natural monsters. So you get a bunch of strong boxes, and then you have scarabs, where you can add, like, six more strong boxes so well basically what i'm saying is you can get something like 44 46 strong boxes on your map um and then uh when you have that with the sexton all of those monsters that come out of the strong boxes are going to drop a lot of uh a lot of stuff there is another interesting thing you can do there's another sexton that makes that all your strong boxes are corrupted and this is an interesting way that you can actually farm a lot of six things um, most of them are going to be corrupted. Actually, well, 99% are going to be corrupted. Um, you would have to drop a natural one for it not to be. But yeah, let's, let's imagine that all of them are corrupted, uh, and only some of them are good, but the rest of them you can sell for divine orbs, um, which is very, very potent. So th those are some of the, like, cool things where you can combine league mechanics for a lot more power. But very important that you can roll strong boxes. You should always roll Arcanist boxes. These are the strong boxes that give you currency. Normally, I would roll that for at least increased quantity or ideally contains additional items. Um, and uh, another one that's worth uh, is going the Diviner strong box. Diviner strong box is very, very worth rolling. Generally, these are actually worth using engineering orbs on. I, I think that's a bit of a pain. I don't like engineering orbs. I'd probably prefer them not to be in the game. They're just clunky. And I don't really... I don't enjoy leaving them up, picking something up, and then going back in. You could also carry them on you all the time. Um, on diviners, it depends a little bit. But some quick tips. Here's another way where increased quantity or additional items is also very strong. Um, and then... Another thing that's very good... Sometimes you can like specifically need like a unique item. So then you can roll on the diviner contains divination cards that gives you unique items and you will get more of those. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty worth rolling those as well. And the other and last strong box that's actually worth rolling is the uh, cartographer strong box. I would only roll that if you're in like a, at least 76 or a 77 map. They cannot naturally spawn... Well, or 78. I think 78 is the highest. 
It's either 70... Tier 12 is the highest, at least. Whatever that is. I think that's 78. Yes, tier 12 is 78. Uh, and that's the highest it can naturally spawn in. However, um, through both Betrayal uh, and also through Incursion, you can get level 83 Cartographer's Draw Moxes. Oh wait, 79. 79 is the highest. But either way, you can get 83 uh, and they're very worth rolling. Um, rolling plus 1, 2, or 3 levels is very worth on this and also additional quantity. Um, it's very, very good. Let's see. Next up, with Beyond and Rampage. Um, so the way Beyond works, and uh, it's a very, very popular mechanic among racers because it adds so much more density, monsters, and just like, you can farm a lot more experience per hour with Beyond on the map because there's just so many more things. Uh, and how it works is that whenever you kill a monster, Every monster has a chance to spawn a portal. Whenever there's four of these like portal balls next to each other, they'll form a portal and just spawn like a beyond pack, which consists of like a rare and three blues or something. Um, and uh, if you have three of these portals very close to each other, they will spawn a beyond boss, uh, which there are several. Um, <clears throat> One sec. So here you have the most dangerous one being a Baxoth. He's pretty rare, doesn't spawn very often, but um, it's kind of a bit of an event when he spawns. The entire screen will kind of explode. It'll feel like some sort of doomsday scenario. Um, and n sadly not very rewarding. The best thing he drops right now is a Starforge Divination card, but um, I, I, I think they could have like changed it and made him a little bit more rewarding because he is fairly dangerous. Uh, and there's others as well, like Effie, Host, um, Nam, and Bameth. So there are four minor bosses and then a Baxalt, which is like the main boss. I would love to see Beyond get a rework and, and like up the rewards a little bit. Oh, and Satosh. Did I miss one? Is there five? Either way, um, there's a bunch of bosses and they are all fairly dangerous. All fairly dangerous. So, definitely Beyond is something you only want to run when you have a fairly strong character. Uh, and they have actually talked about removing Beyond, which I know a lot of the, the older player base was pretty upset at because it's used so much to farm faster. Um, and there were like a few like unique items that was added uh, with this league that were like boss specific. None of the Beyond uniques are particularly worth using or farming for. Rampage uh, was the was the softcore version of this league, um, and Rampage is a kill streak buff that stacks up to a thousand uh, in the Rampage league. Whenever you can either get it on the map device or if it's active, it's just you just have to kill monsters and you'll get a buff. But you can get this buff, which is very very good, um, just by wearing some of the Rampage items, uh, and and the items will say that they have Rampage on them. So, for example, Shadows and Dust is uh, an item that would have that, or Biscuit's Leash. Rampage stacks grant the following. 1% movement speed per 20 stacks and 2% increased damage per 10 stacks. So, very, very strong. That adds up very, very quickly and uh, can be a pain because they drop off very quickly. But they also, like, trigger, like, very powerful threshold abilities. Some of them are, like... Detonate dead, like just loads of bodies start exploding around you, and you can like feel like, oh my god, did I almost just die? But it is actually you, uh, or your, the rampage effect doing the explosions. But uh, very, very good, and also used a lot for racing. Bloodlines and torment. So, um, bloodline packs are like whenever you see that the magic monsters, like a magic pack, will be like slightly purpley, and uh, they'll have like the text here. Uh, some of the most dangerous ones, and this is also a nemesis one that I should have mentioned, uh, Corrupting Blood. Uh, so you have uh, blue packs with Corrupting Blood, and you have that on nemesis monsters, and they're basically giving you a very, very powerful bleed. So 
that is one of the main reasons that you want to make sure you have bleed immunity very often on a damage over time flask because it's so much damage um bearers as well is another like bloodline pack that is very dangerous they are the um either fire cold or lightning damage circles that drop on the ground and they there's so many of them often that they can very very easily um quickly rapidly kill the player character and uh yeah, they're, they're fairly, like, telegraphed right now, so it's not that hard to spot them. And obviously, you can, like, hover over the monster before they die, but it depends how fast you're clearing and how much you're paying attention. Um, and, like, Bloodlines right now is, like, pretty decent. There's not, like, that many, like, insane effects from Bloodlines. So it's in a pretty good spot and just adds more danger for the player. Torment. Uh, this is ghosts and probably the mechanic I would want to see gone the most. Um, it's changed a lot throughout the game and currently they are the ghosts that you see that, you know, they'll run through monsters which will get like a green glow above them. That means that it's been touched, ghost touched. Uh, and they will get uh, different, well, they will get quantity and rarity bonuses and will also get small buffs depending on what ghost it is. Um... They will also try to possess rare or unique monsters and they're sort of like um, compounding. I always forget this word. Exponential. They're sort of exponential in power. Uh, whereas like one or two ghosts are fine. But once you start getting three, four or five or like something crazy. Like if you've ever seen a uh, monster with like seven or eight ghosts inside it. It will just be insanely powerful and can very, very easily... Well, you can tell that it breaks the game because sometimes it'll just like tap you and you'll be dead. Um, so very, very exponential in damage. They uh, they will basically always run away from you. And I think they run exactly three, maybe four times. And then they'll despawn. So they will try to go towards rares or uniques. And um, the let's see, let me let me look up. Um, Martyr, Torment of Martyr is one of the most dangerous ones. Because that will basically, every monster that it has touched will explode on death. So that is very, very uh, scary. Uh, and the ghost called Seditionist is very, very good because it will guarantee a map. Um, so if you find yourself in a fairly high map and you see a Seditionist and you manage to get it in to a rare, then that will guarantee a map. A Tormented Embezzler is basically like an Arcanist Shrine. Uh, it will give you a bunch of currency if you get it into a rare. And then Smuggler will give you a guaranteed unique on death. All the other ones you can look up on the wiki, but most of the other ones aren't particularly interesting. They're just dangerous and will try to kill you. Um, yeah. They're like, there's, there's so little they add right now that I don't think they're in a great spot for the game. Tempest and Warband. Tempest being one of my favorite leagues of all time and most enjoyable time to play the game. Uh, Tempest is these like circles that will spawn. And uh, you can get Tempest through prophecies. And you can sometimes get them from, uh, you can get them in the Incursion Temple. And you can get, well, yeah. Pretty much it. Yeah. Incursion Temple and Prophecies. And uh, they are pretty interesting. I'm trying to remember if there's any sextants with Tempests. I think there is. I think there is sextants with Tempests too. Either way. Um, the, the way they work is that um, they will have a circle. And they can either do like. Some of them, like the lightning and cold one, will do like an explosion or throw abilities at you after you see like the circle will like... Uh, some of them will give buffs. Like there, um, there will be buffs that can, uh, for example, corrupting Tempest. If it touches the monsters or you, everything will be corrupted. This is a great way to farm six things. The reason why corrupting things is a great way to farm six things is because... The um, we've talked about Val Orbs and how they work in previous slides. Um, but one of the outcomes when when it does like reroll the item is that it actually goes to max sockets as well. So it'll reroll the item, every stat on it, like it'll turn it rare as well. So if you 
if you drop, for example, a chevron's wrappings or a comb's heart, it would destroy the unique, turn it into a rare item, but sometimes with six links and random stats. Um, so not to confuse people, this isn't something you can do like, oh, I'm just going to try my chance to six link this by using a Val Orb, right? It will like basically destroy your item. It won't like keep any other stats. Um, but it's a cool way to farm either like usable six links or to get a lot of divine orbs. Um, there was another Tempest as well, which you can currently only get inside of the Incursion Temple called Radiating Tempest. Um, it's very watered down now, but it does give you a big quantity and rarity bonus. But yeah, it's so watered down now that it's not particularly worth farming with. But it was a pretty fun league. There was, it was very special when the league was active, but uh, also something that's not super exciting to keep in the game except for the Corrupting Tempest. Um... It does also add some quantity and rarity to the map that it's on. Warbands added... Yeah, they're like, they're similar to Exiles, sort of. Uh, and they're like unique monsters. And there was like... Uh, at, the, at the time, there would be like a war between different warbands and stuff. And they would be active in different areas. Now, some of them are bosses in maps. So, for example, Lighthouse has the Red Blade warband. And... Um, trying to remember where the Chaos Warband is. I'm trying to remember the name of that map. Uh, Acid Cavern has the Chaos Warband. And um, it's hard to remember where they all are. Uh, ice. Um, where's that? What's the ice map called? Iceberg. Iceberg has the Mute Wind. Um... So you can, uh, here in those maps, target farm the uniques that they came with the Lee. And you can also get warbands through prophecies. And then Shipyard has the Brine Rots. And you can target farm these. So for example, this is a league that does have uniques that are fairly useful. Namely the Red Blade Banner. Um, and you can farm this just by doing a bunch of lighthouse maps. They do also have like blue items that drop identified. Um... Mute Wind Boots, for example, I believe is immunity to freeze. Uh, and the Red Blade Helmets have like physical damage taken as fire. So they do have like, it was a fairly interesting thing they added to the game here. Uh, and some of the uniques are pretty cool. Oops. Talisman. Um, Talisman and their entire league mechanic isn't in the game anymore. So unless they bring back the league mechanic, it's not really worth covering. But we do still have the talismans. And they have recently gotten buffed. So if you're an older player thinking like, why is he even talking about talismans? Uh, because they used to just be completely alteration shards. Now they are actually incredibly useful. Because they did exactly what I was hoping and suggesting they did. Which was every time a talisman drops now and it's above item level 68. It will spawn with a random anoint. Which we are about to talk about once we get to Blightly. But... Um, the talismans are always corrupted, and they have loads of interesting implicits. Um, we can uh, open the talisman uh, page here and uh, look over a few and talk about which ones are actually interesting and important. But there are uh, a bunch here. So, like, you have the tier 1 ones. Some of them just have damage. And it's very, very decent if your character doesn't just need stats or you don't need an influence amulet. And it can be very, very good to get early on. Bone Spire, obviously insanely powerful for Archmage builds. Um, a lot of them, like this, you can see is just generic damage that aren't that interesting. Um, plus one zombie, and, and some of them are pretty cool. Some can be very, very build changing, or let you very, very easily do bosses that do penetration, such as Itziri or uh, the Shaper. Which we talked about in layered defenses with Noogie. We talked about how like you can bypass penetration. Uh, this one, very, very strong for energy shield characters and obviously 12% life. So you can see that there are some really, really cool talismans here. And uh, my suggestion was that they should either remove them from the game or have a random annoyance drop with them. Uh, talisman would also be a perfect uh, example or a perfect thing for them to play more with smart loot, which is something they're currently experimenting in Heist, where the items roll with more like things that make sense together. So, you know, like an amulet would drop with life resists and some damage and not just like you won't get as many like opposing stats 
like maybe not both evasion and energy shield percentage but uh yeah the random annoyance are very cool we haven't explained annoyance yet but that is coming up um and either way these were always worth looting just for alteration shards at least if you're still self fun because it's very hard to get enough alterations but they are very very cool now so that was a good change and if they do put it back in the game, we will cover exactly how the mechanic worked. Hopefully they will never do that because it was horrible. Um, but now you can see that all the earlier leagues were very simple. And we are getting more advanced leagues now with like, there, there's a lot more happening now. Um, and Perundus was probably one of the leagues where you started noticing that like there was a change in content. And there was more content in the leagues. Um... So, Perundus is basically strong boxes guarded by uh, yellow ghosty monsters that don't leave corpses. Um, and there are different Perundus chests. Like, there are some chests that give you gems, some that focus on weapons, some that gives you divination cards, some that give you maps, and, and some that just give you a bunch of coins. Um, the Perundus thing was mostly made to give people more, like, hand issues and arm issues because they decided to put shitloads of them in in loads of small stacks instead of you know stacking them into large ones uh, so it's mostly uh designed to like destroy your wrist um and then these coins that you then have to collect thousands of can be exchanged to kadiro uh sometimes called bro dero or scam dero depending on what he's selling you uh, and he can offer you almost any item. Especially new ones are not always offered because they manually have to update the table of what he sells and how many coins he sells them for. Uh, and they also do not necessarily... Sometimes in Path of Exile, they will change the rarity of an item. So for example, the um, Aziri's Foible is an item that used to be very, very common. Um, and Kadiro's value... Uh, represents this because it's only 800 or 700 coins or something to buy it off him however it's actually quite rare to drop now because it's become so popular and they changed the rarity to make it more valuable so it actually drops a lot rarer now but from Kadira you can still buy it very cheaply so this is a mechanic that's like not updated that much and it's a little bit behind uh but you can offer almost any item we i want to show the wikipedia page here um because you can actually see what most of the things and what most of the offers are. So if I open the Wikipedia page here, you can see, for example, Exalted Orb is between 710 and 2,716 coins. A Mirror, which is very valuable, is 13,000 to 17,000 coins. Um, and then unique items can go down like Headhunter. Headhunter and Mirror are the two best things that you can get. Uh, where's H? There, Headhunter is between 16,000 and 28,000 coins. So there's a lot of really, really good things you can get here. Um, and it's not always accessible. Sometimes it is on the map device. Sometimes it's part of other mechanics. For example, in Delirium, which we haven't discussed yet, we will um, sometimes get Perandus coins as one of the rewards. And then Kadiro has a chance to spawn. Um, so he is generally included and this was a fairly popular league because it let a lot of people experiment and try using a lot more uniques you can also guarantee kadiro with a uh, gilded paranda scarab and he will very rarely sell you the paranda's manor which is a uh, paranda's map that will basically uh, guarantee one of the uniques. Uh, there are a few, and there's some of them are still cool. Seven League Step is notably very, very interesting because it gives you 50% movement speed on your boots, which is very good since you can use it at level 2 and level new characters very quickly. Very, very cool mechanic for a lot of people. Prophecy. Now, Prophecy was one of the most boring leagues that Path of Exile has ever run. Uh, but it was also one of the more useful because it's a very great core mechanic and one very easily ignored by new players. Um, when, when it was the league mechanic, all it was that monsters drop per silver coins. That was it. There's no special insane mechanic. Um, and you just exchange them for prophecies. Now the prophecies can be pretty interesting. Um, this has the faded unique system, which is awesome. For the game uh, and the way this works is that you will you will get a prophecy that says 
while if you kill this boss while you have this item in your inventory it used to be that you had to wear it but now it's only in your inventory it will upgrade and change to a better one so for example silver branch will change into silver bow um which will just be like an upgraded more end game version of the unique and there are some of these uniques that are really really special steel mage brushed upon one of them yesterday talking about the uh, asana's chant um, I can't remember if the chant is the upgrade or the base one, but either way, there are a lot of them that are very, very special, very cool. And it's such a cool system because they can keep working on this over time and giving us like more, more better versions of like outdated uniques where maybe they want to keep like the base version. Um, and all monsters in the game can randomly drop silver coins. Strong boxes very rarely, or sorry, very often will have like, Strongbox drops four additional silver coins and stuff like that. Uh, and Betrayal can also give a lot of it. So you encounter Navali in the climb and she says, I've been expecting you. Uh, I always like to run past her just to you though. I don't want to make sure she's right all the time, right? It's like, oh, you've been expecting me? See ya. Um, and you can have up to seven prophecies active at a time. Some of them are very easy to get rid of just by going to a zone. Maybe there's some you don't care about doing. And there are some really, really expensive ones that makes it very worth to do. You have one prophecy um, called Faded Connections that basically lets you, not for free, but very easily six sync an item. Uh, the way it works is that you spam jewelers on an item and the first time the item hits six sockets, it will also automatically link, which cannot normally happen. A item can only go from one socket to six socket and then the new five ones can be linked. So if you've ever had a friend tell you that, oh my god, I six-linked from jewelers, they've actually never done so. It's not possible. Uh, only through this prophecy is that possible. But um, either way, uh, there's so many really good prophecies. Some of the faded ones are, are very good. You also have, uh, this is a way to get monstrous treasure. Uh, you can get uh, trash to treasure, which is a guaranteed unique. So, for example, if you use it on something that only has one unique, let's say um, uh, Sorcerer Boots. Skyforth is the only Sorcerer Boots that you can chance. Because the other ones you have to be in Warband. Um, so, like, there are some things that you can, like, guarantee. You, like, use a chance orb when you have the Prophecy active and then it guarantees the unique. Um, there are some other cool, like, more common Prophecies for, for example, Master Missions. Um, so you could get like Zana and, and, and have a better chance for Zana to spawn on the map. Um, and, um, there's also a few of them that are very expensive for upgrading the item, like the Aziri shield, uh, the Aziri's mirror upgrading that shield is very expensive as well. So even if you don't know what you're doing as a new player, it's very worth just at least spamming away your coins now and again. Um, because there's just so many of them that are very rewarding. Essences. Um, essences are, like we talked about in the crafting session, targeted alchemies, uh, or targeted chaos orbs when you've upgraded them, that basically they will reroll the item similar to an alchemy or chaos, but they will guarantee one stat. Um, this came at the same time as the Shaper, and um, you can see here is what they look like. They'll be like caged in, you know, they're they're like caged in frost, uh, and uh, they're imprisoned by the essence. You click it three times, and it escapes and try to, tries to kill you, and you can kill it to get its essence. Now, essences are amazing. They are such a good way to craft for so many things. Uh, they're extremely strong, especially early game. Throwing like a uh, if if you find what one good example of how to use it, you can hand in a uh, Dapper Prodigy Divination card set and you can get a um, a random six link. And a great way to craft this early game is just to throw a Shrieking or a Deafening Greed on it. Then you're guaranteeing the life, which might be the only thing you need. Um, the special essences, you can some of them are build enabling. I've seen a lot of people do like Hysteria weapons uh, as their builds. Uh, Delirium Gloves, that's this essence here. It's like insanely powerful for Essence Drain, and there's so many of them that are just very strong and very good, and uh, they're a great way of crafting. Uh, another uh, easy example, obviously using Essence of Zeal on a boot gives you guaranteed movement speed. This is a great way to do movement speed boots. If you do um, 
Essence of Horror on a Helmet. That gives you a stat which is Socketed Gems, deal 30% more damage. Now, a cool mention to use this is that some of the influenced helmets, which we talked about in the past, have um, have things like Socketed Gems are supported by Control Destruction, or like, you know, they're just supported by, for example, Elemental Focus, con or they're, they're supported by things. Conk Effect, for example, an Elder Helmet is a good idea. Hypothermia on Shaper Helmet. Um, and I don't think anything has controlled or early focus, but that doesn't matter. Um, but with Essence of Horror, then, you can basically use what we call a pseudo six link, uh, which makes you maybe on a uh, character that you don't need that many gem slots, you can actually fit in a Combs Heart and still have a six link or even a seven or eight link on some builds in your helmet, which is very, very cool and something um, that Essence has let you do. So there's, uh, there's so many uses for this. They are very good because there's so many items where you may maybe only need at least one mod, sometimes two or three, and having one of them be guaranteed is very strong. Um, Spellsinger as well. Uh, we haven't covered Spellsinger and how it works except in like my Spellsinger build guides, but the fact that they can use nearly any damage types makes it so that they're so strong to roll with high essences when you can guarantee one damage stat. Um, and yeah, some of the mods from Essences, like the, the four special ones, uh, which is Horror, Insanity, Hysteria, and Delirium, you can only get on those four. So they are very good, worth picking up, and I cover it more in the crafting episode, but I, I do recommend that most players craft with Screaming Essences. Uh, Deafening Essences are generally something you only want to use regularly when you have 20 to 50 exalts plus. And even then, you'll see a lot of players will be more like, more economical and use screamings or sh at least shriekings. But de de deafenings are very expensive to craft with. Breach, uh, very, very notable as one of the most popular leagues of all time. You'll often see a lot of older players saying it was their favorite league ever. And Breach was one of the most currency giving leagues of all time, where one Breach portal, um, would give like as much currency as a whole map. It has been watered down very, very much now, and uh, it's been changed a little bit throughout the time. So if you're an older player, there are not just breach stones now, but also empowered breach stones. Um, and this means that there are some mechanics in the game that can either drop or through betrayal, you can upgrade a plain breach stone into a charged, enriched, or pure breach stone. Um, a normal breach stone, uh, and the way the mechanic works, is that you would gather splinters from killing monsters in the breach once you have a hundred splinters you can combine them and i can show you quickly how to combine them because this brought a lot of confusion during the league um i don't have a hundred splinters but you would basically um hold shift click put it back in the stack and it would combine um into the stack there and 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 make it oh actually i do i have a bunch here so, that's actually behind me, isn't it? Yeah, let's do it over here. So, shift click, right click, and put it in. Now you have a breach stone. You can open that, and uh, it opens a map to the breach lord's domain. Now, when you're in here, it again opens a breach, um, and you have like a, you'll see a timer appear, and you have to kill the monsters. And a worthy opponent. Yes. Uh, and and uh, this always moves at the same speed, no matter what you do. So it was very, very friendly that you didn't necessarily need to have a crazy fast build. Uh, it's a very decent amount of XP. It's a good way to level new characters. Um, and in uh, when you get to the boss, then the boss can drop a unique item, like a special breach unique item. The monsters inside, it's, it's a little bit of an odd mechanic. So, um, the monsters inside this domain, like the normal white, blue, and rare monsters, they cannot drop the special breach uniques. Uh, the boss can. Um, and then when you are in a regular map and you're doing a breach like this, then, um, the monsters can drop the special uniques and the boss only drops like splinters. Um, the boss that can appear randomly, it'll make like a... Uh, very weak that like barely anyone even knows it's there, but it'll make like a when it spawns 
Uh, it was very interesting because I suggested on Reddit that they should have a sound when the breach sword spawned and the a developer replied saying there is, it's just really quiet. We turned volume to max and yes, there is in fact a very quiet sound when they spawn. Um, but uh, yeah, when the timer runs out, uh, so it's probably run out by now, you fail the event. So now I don't actually get to get to the boss. So you want to make sure that you don't leave the map if you want to complete it. You basically want to try to stay close to the edge of where monsters are sparting. Um, let's see. And uh, inside these, there would also be like kind of chests. There'll be like hands and big hands uh, that you can uh, click for some extra rewards. And it's a fairly cool mechanic. It's a very, very smooth like way to like engage with it. You just walk over the hand and that spawns it. Uh, and there are loads and loads of cool uh, uniques from this league. Uh, and like I said, they can drop from either monsters in a map or the boss inside of their domains. Uh, when there is, when you're doing the um, upgraded versions, so either charged, enriched, or pure, you have a better chance for the blessing. The pure one um, will guarantee a blessing. So, for example, the most expensive one, the chaos one, called Chayula, uh, has a... Um, blessing of Chayula and that is often very expensive you normally never want to run this one without upgrading it to pure because you don't want to take the chance that the blessing won't drop so yeah and and again they they have a zero percent drop chance of uniques or blessings uh from monsters in here uh so it's just kind of reversed where they can drop um which is slightly different than legion which we'll talk about in a second. Um, let's see. And there, there's so many, uh, the so many cool uniques from these league mechanics. Some which are still like build enabling and used today. And uh, to upgrade the stones, they either sometimes they'll new mechanics like heist will drop the stones upgraded. Um, and um, then there is also betrayal which we'll talk about later. Betrayal is actually too long of a subject to cover in this video because it's a 40 minute video on its own. Um, and I do already have a video for that, but we'll uh, talk about that later. <sighs> actually, the last thing to mention on Breach is um, whenever we have access to Breach on the map device, which we don't right now, so it's a pain to get, there is a Breach Portal Gem, uh, Val Breach. Um, it might not always seem apparent for why this would be a good use. The build I'm playing right now is one of the examples for where this is a good use. Uh, Val Breach basically gives you um, Val Breach as a uh, Val skill. Once you've gained enough souls to cast Val Breach, it will uh, open a portal with loads of monsters, the monsters do not give experience, they do not give loot, they do give boss charges, and they'll work with like on kill effects. So for example, Infernal Blow, dealing monsters uh, extra damage, like with depending on what's killed and stuff like that. Um, it, can, it can be really good like with things like that. Maybe you have like a bow and you really need chain. Uh, this obviously is adding like impale stacks to monsters and then I will deal extra damage with loads of monsters. So it can be used for mechanics where you need monsters to be there to deal extra damage. Uh, is like a use for it. Now, if I went inside here, Esh's Domain, and started volleying Breach Gems, I would not be able to get it. It specifically can be gotten from like drops from some old League mechanics. Uh, like Heist drops it and um, Bestiary can drop it and stuff like that. But generally, uh, you need to have... Uh, breach on here and then go inside a breach map and volley. You can't just volley while you're standing inside a breach, sadly. I've tried. A lot. Um, okay. Legacy. Legacy was sort of a waiting league. I honestly think they could do this once every two years to sort of catch up on mechanics. Uh, and it was basically a advanced flashback. Um, not, none of this is... Um, in the game anymore so we're not really going to talk about it a lot but it was basically just giving you these like emblems that you could choose what league mechanic you wanted active on which map and they had the coolest thing which is the only reason we brought it up which was they had relicary keys which they've said they are going to bring back in the future 
and they give legacy items. So throughout Path of Exile, some items will get nerfed. Notably, Combs Heart used to be 1,000 life, um, and now it is 500. Um, in Legacy, through the Reliquary Key, if you got a Legacy Combs Heart, you would get a 1,000 life Combs Heart uh, in here. So they have said that they are bringing this back in the future. Uh, we don't know how much they would change it, but uh, either way, very, very cool and exciting mechanic. Harbinger. Um, this was an other league where I think they've partnered up with hospitals um, specializing in wrist injuries. But uh, this was an other league where, you know, they, they did get some flack for the amount of insane amount of things that we had to pick up. Um, and they made it slightly better. But basically here they realized that it wasn't enough for us to drop a lot of orbs. We had to drop 1 20th of some orbs and 1 10th of others. So here they introduced shards like Kale Shards, Mirror Shards, Alchemy Shards. Um, and, and they introduced shards for several currencies that didn't have it before because they were like, we don't feel like our players click enough. Um, so that was the, the beauty that Harbinger introduced. And it was actually a fairly, uh, fairly cool league. They um, attempted to like make like a language that the player base had to find out the words and stuff like that. And a lot of players still enjoy that to this day and trying to figure out exactly what they said. Only some of it has been discovered. Um, they have hinted at Harbinger coming back in the future. So we are most likely getting Harbinger 2.0 at some point. Um, a lot of people think that is 3.13. Uh, Harbinger 2.0. Uh, uh, but either way, um, there are two different Harbingers. These are the common ones and there's a more rare one. It looks exactly like the... Uh, um, the, the, like, the dude from, uh, Game of Thrones, like, the, the Ice King. He even has the same crown. Um, so, yeah, they, uh, there are two different ones. The, uh, these ones will drop worse loot. The, uh, the, uh, Game of Thrones guy will drop better stuff. And, um, they can drop Exalted Shards, Chaos Shards, Mirror Shards. They don't really have any, like, crazy, uh, they can't drop any special uniques or anything. All of the special uniques come from using these Harbinger Orbs on maps to create these, which are called Beachheads. And in a Beachhead, you uh, you encounter a Stargate with seven Chevrons locked, and uh, it's summoning a bunch of these dudes. And eventually, the um, the uh, the dude from Game of Thrones comes out, and uh, he will drop a. Um, I don't think I have one ready to show him. We should, we'll, we'll example that next time, but he will drop like a third, a fourth, or a fifth of a unique item. I think four, I think four shards is the most. But uh, for example, Unshattered Will is a really, really powerful shield. And uh, it comes in four different parts. And once you have the four parts, you will put them like next to each other in your inventory and they will boom, forge together into the shield. Some of them are very, very strong. This was, I believe, the first time that we had a six-link helmet, for example, in the game, um, which was very cool. And that would like let you um, that would let you uh, use a comb's heart and still use the six-link. So very, very cool. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Was it innervate and something? I can't remember exactly what the six-link helmet is, but it is a pretty decent one still today. Uh, and so, oh, actually, Bringer of Rain was 6th link before, but that was very, very punishing. Innervate and Hypothermia is on the, uh, the 6th link Harbinger helmet. Oh, Ice Bite. Either way, there are several of them now in the game. Innervate and Ice Bite. So, obviously, this was a lot weaker, but unlike Bringer of Rain, didn't punish you by not letting you wear a chest piece. So you could wear the Harbinger helmet and a Combs Heart, which people did. Um... It was a kind of tedious league. Uh, the beachhead isn't always the most fun because it's a very like forced set speed. There's not much you can do to hurry it up. Uh, but it is still decent. Drops a lot of different rewards. Um, and there is quite a lot to talk about with this league because it introduced so many different currencies. Uh, and also mirror shards, which to this day I have not dropped one. I have had three full mirrors, but not a shard. Um, Harbingers. Uh, the way they work is that they will upgrade the map randomly. So you just throw one here on the Basilica. Sorry, I need to lower them up. And you generally want to chisel them first because they do get corrupted. You can see here it turned into a tier 14, now a tier 15, now a tier 16. Um, 
not a hundred percent sure on the chance um, to turn it into a beachhead, but it also will turn it into a beachhead of the relative tier. So I'm gonna move this here so you can see it better. Uh, but if I use this on this and it turns into beachhead now, it is going to be a white beachhead. Um, whereas if I do it on a yellow one, it is going to turn into a yellow beachhead. Apparently they just like don't want to give good university examples. Okay, let's just... Academy seems appropriate. No, okay. It just didn't want to turn into a beachhead. It hates me. Uh, and I don't have a beachhead here. But either way, you see the you see the picture here. It's beautiful. Um, that was insanely unlucky. That must be like a ludicrously rare chance. Um, but yeah, they're basically like an island. You run around and then you kill all the harbingers and you get the rewards. Um, this has been um, altered slightly since Harvest. And they kept that mechanic in the game in Heist. And we're hopefully it'll stay in the game in the future but um in harvest they added a infused beachhead which is basically i think it's 83 um whereas the normal beachhead is 82 and uh in the infused beachhead you can drop a scroll to empower some of the uh to all of the uh, harbinger uniques and make them even stronger the belt was exceptionally strong I can't remember any of the other ones being insane, but the Empowered Belt is very, very strong because it gives you action speed. Um, which is kind of multiplicative with a lot of other speed mechanics. But either way, um, it did add a lot of other orbs as well. It added like Engineering Orbs, Binding Orbs. Binding Orbs being one of the best additions to the game. And to me, it is absolutely insanity that this isn't like a quest reward from killing Val. It would be very, very huge quality of life, especially for new players. To get a guaranteed four link uh, around act three or act four um it's sort of like painful that um it's sort of painful that you only start dropping these basically in maps where you don't really need them anymore you don't really care about guaranteeing a four link so much uh but either way having it somewhere in act three or act four would be great for the game engineering orbs one of the worst things in my opinion that they added to the game they increased the quality of the strong box I never feel like they make a notable change that I actually care about. Uh, and they're like a pain to pick up. And there's already too much in the game to pick up. Um, Horizons will cover these uh, and Harbingers more in depth in the mapping section. But they're great. And Ancient Orbs, one of the most fun things they ever added to the game. Because everybody loves gambling. Ancient Orbs, uh, which we covered in depth in the currency one. Basically uh, re-roll a unique to another of that type. Now, that doesn't mean that if I use it on Wanderlusts, it'll turn Wool Shoes into other Energy Shield Shoes, uh, or directly other Wool Shoes, it'll turn it into any other boots. That means that Wanderlust could uh, go into um, Combs Roots, for example. Um, now, in my hideout, there's obviously no League mechanic active, so I can't turn it into something that is League specific. Like, for example, I couldn't uh, use the Ancient Orb on this to make a Headhunter in my hideout, which is important to remember. I think that's pretty much all of Harbinger, but pretty decent mechanic, even if I didn't particularly enjoy the league. Um, let's see, we're around halfway, see if I can get everything else. There's so much to cover with leagues. Uh, we might make this three hours next year, uh, next semester, but we'll see. Abyss uh, gave us the power to make smiley faces in our inventory with two eyes and a belt. Um, and uh, you basically crack or touch a crack on the ground and it will... Uh, run around the map, sometimes bug out and run around forever, it feels like, um, and spawn monsters. Now, there are two things that can happen. The uh, Abyss can like, uh, run around and uh, just open a chest, or it can uh, open a crack to the underworld, and interestingly enough, it always does this on the first go. So I'll flashbang you all and whip out paint here to explain this, but if I run over the Abyss here and it travels, here, it either opens the abyss on this first one, or if you see it move a second time, um, it will never ever spawn an abyssal depth. So that's a little rule of thumbs. So you'll notice a lot of racers and experienced players will mostly always do the first one here, but if it moves a second time, we will always ignore it because a lot of the time I don't really care about doing like this step. This step, 
this step just to get the chest here at the end. Um, so that's a like, nice little rule of thumb. Um, there's a second tip as well. When you enter the Abyssal Depths, um, there's actually, you can instantly know whether it's a Lich or not. Uh, this changes sometimes, so I'll keep this part especially up to date. Currently, it opens like a red portal. Uh, see if I can Google and find that. Peewee red portal loading screen. Uh, but it opens a red portal loading screen that looks like this. Uh, and when it enters, when when entering, you see this, then you know that there is a lich in there. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, it can stress you out a little bit because it always, always gives you that when exiting. But yeah, well, if you get that upon entering, then it's always uh, a lich, which is one of the abyss bosses. Um, the music will also be different um, inside. It, it sounds very, very cool, the music. We'll do a quick example of that. Abyss Lich music. Uh, very, very cool music. So, like, if there's exciting music, that's, like, another way. Uh, so even if they do change the loading screens, they'll likely not change that. Um, so there, there are two ways that you can, like, make sure that it is a Lich. Which is very cool. Um, there are two different Liches that you can get in maps. Um, and, uh, it's like, Amanamananu and some other dude. Amanananu is the, uh, scariest one. Uh, very, very dangerous and just, inc yeah, incredibly dangerous, especially in private leagues with multi-projectiles. But, uh, the other one, uh, Ulaman is very, very easy. Don't think I've ever died or even came close to dying, but Amanananu is just insane. Yeah, absolutely insane. So I would try to, well, it just puts loads of things on the ground that explode. And uh, I don't want to go too much into like how to beat bosses in this. But yeah, very, very dangerous. Um, and the rewards for this league is really, really cool. So obviously you have loads of unique specific rewards to this. Like you have um, the uh, Stygian Vice unique belt, darkness and throne, which is extremely good and the most powerful item for level 1 characters, way more powerful than a tabula because there are um, special um, jewels in this league and they can actually be as low as required level 2. So you can use them on a fresh character. Um, or a required level 1 actually. But anyway, they're they're very, very good. You can I usually roll a few for new characters every league uh, for when I do get a Darkness and Throne. Hopefully they never change that. But way stronger than a tabula rasa. Um, Dominations rings as well. Uh, Barracks Respite and Barracks Grip and whatever the other one's called is also way stronger than a tabula for new characters. Um, but yeah, and, and there are there are several several other good uniques here. We have like um, uh, the unique gloves, boots, and uh, helmet can be used on builds to put more like jewels in for extra damage. And you have a uh, Shroud of the Lightless, which has a... Uh, I think it's Elemental Penetration Gem in it. So it's basically a 6-link once you've 5-linked it. Um, and very, very... Like, all the unique items from this league is fairly cool. Um, and the rare items are very cool, too. There's an insane amount of damage on these. They can roll up to, I think, currently 35 life and then 3 damage stats. Uh, this one is for bows. This one is for spells. It's called Searching Eye, Hypnotic Eye. Uh, you have Murderous Eye for melee and attacks. Um, and then you have the Ghastly Eye for minions. They are insanely strong, um, and a large amount of damage, and the Stygian Vice has an Abyssal Socket on it, which can be on different sets of gear. There's also a Fossil, which we haven't talked about yet, which lets you put it on, um, lets you put it on rare items. But Abyssal Sockets can have these jewels in them, uh, and the, this Stygian Vice has it instead of like, a leather belt would have 40 life implicit. A Stygian Vice has a Abyssal, uh, Abyssal Socket implicit. It's pretty much always better as long as you can roll a jewel with, like, 25 to 30 life and 2 damage stats. It's pretty much always better. Very popular as well to do Onslaught jewels. Um, that's pretty much all there is to say about this league. It's, like, very, very powerful. Um, they have been nerfed several times, but even today, 
Uh, you'll see some builds will invest so much as 20 to 60 exalt in just jewels because the jewels are so powerful that they can carry a build to the entire build is just the uh, jewels. Bestiary is uh, one of the core mechanics in the game and also one of the master missions we'll be talking about a lot in mapping. Um, it's ignored a lot by new players and the way it works is that you um, you can slap Einar on your map. You click this one and it'll be like white, yellow and red beasts. Some of them are level capped so there's some you can only get in uh, tier 13 is the highest re requirement for any which is like the tiger. Uh, also one of the bosses of Bestiary. Uh, there are loads loads of good rewards um for example create a unique jewel so many unique jewels they can be worth a lot there's create a unique belt which can give you give you headhunter create a unique item always worth sorry create a unique item always worth doing you can obviously technically you can give pretty much every cross league item there are some exceptions uh they've made bestiary and cross league stuff very clunky and very weird i think a quick rule of... No, there's not even a good rule of thumb. Just some cross league things does drop from it. Some don't. It's very weird. Um, Blight does. Legion doesn't. Um, I, I can't even remember. It They've like... They're very inconsistent with some of it. Um, and you cannot get boss drops from this. Is the important thing here. So breach uniques can't get any. Because um, they're all considered boss uniques. Even though they do drop off the monsters too. Um... Very, very strange. So uh, that means that if you do the create a unique flask, you cannot get a uh, bottled faith or a dying sun. But you can, out of the create a unique belt, get a headhunter. Or from a unique jewel, you can get um, like the, the minion soul eater jewel, which I forget the name of. Uh, unending hunger. Um, there are loads of more expensive ones as well. Some which are insanely expensive on software trade league. Uh, Split beast is is very very powerful we can do a uh, a quick show of the split beast here uh, i'm sure i have a six thing i just broke one uh sure this is a good example because a lot of new players are going to ask why on earth would i bother with a stupid mechanic it is never worth it so um sometimes in path of exile you'll have a high item level six thing that's like maybe uh maybe a very good base uh, in one league, I remember I made six item level 100 Valor Goddess. So this chest here is a six link. I think you can see this part. Uh, obviously, you don't want this to be a rolled item because it's not going to break it. But if I do this now, what is going to happen? And this is a very rare beast that you shouldn't just use. Um, you do want to like make sure you're using it on something it is worth using it on. Uh, but now I have two six things. None of them are mirrored or corrupted. They're, they're both just, as you can see, they're, they're both got half the mods on either. There are some advanced crafting techniques you can do with this as well. Um, and they're worth, I don't know if anyone on that's in chat right now knows exactly how much they're worth on softcore. Um, but they're worth a large amount. And there are several other beasts as well that are worth picking up. I think there are um, five or six, no, four, maybe four beasts. They give you a six link. There's one that will just give you a random six link. Some that will give you a specific one. Like for example, I believe it is the uh, Carnage Armor six link, which is uh, only item level 80 or higher. So you can, that's level thir tier 13 maps and higher as well. Um, and then there are like these. There's two of them. There's Firek Link's Alpha and Firek Wolf Alpha. The way they work is basically like an annulment or, uh, sorry, it's an annulment and an exalted orb into one. They're worth a lot. Imprint is a remnant of an old orb in Path of Exile that is no longer part of the main game called an Eternal, uh, which is basically like a save game from an item. Uh, this only works to save a blue item. It just means that you could, for example, get one or two of the stats you really want while it's blue, imprint it, and then regal it. And if you are not happy with the regal result, you could restore the item back to the blue. Um, Definitely a mechanic you should not sleep on. And I've made a fairly in-depth video about this too. Um, the, the the league has four different bosses. You have the spider, the crab, the bird, or bird dinosaur, uh, and the tiger. And uh, they have like their own craft. They have their own unique item. And it's a pretty great, uh, pretty great league. 
Bestiar was like kind of annoying and clunky the way they had their initial implementation, but it is uh, pretty good. Um, they also have add mods to flasks. So for example, if this only had 15 maximum charges or for example, even more ideally, because it's a slightly better flask mod, let's say it had 23% reduced charges used, uh, which is ideally what you want to go for. Then I could just force curse immunity on with warding, um, bleed immunity on with staunching. Now, hopefully this is going to blow at least one person's mind, but there are some people that think you have to go and explore to find your best theory. Somebody uh, asks like, hey, I want to buy Kraken first of the deep. I'll pay 10x and you go like, do I have Kraken 10 of the deep? I have him. I'm going to use it here. You do not have to do this. Uh, I, I feel like 80% actually do go in and explore. What you can do here is you can go to Corruptured Beasts. You can search for the one you want. Here we have Kraken, Lord of the Deep. Uh, let's see. And then I can just take it out here from the search feature. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people do actually go exploring. Just do rest assured you do not need to do so. But Bestiary is... Uh, as you can see, my most used mechanic, uh, especially on solo self fun, but also on trade league, uh, it is the number one thing that I will always deplete. I will always use it. Pretty much every map, if I'm not doing any other mechanic, I will make sure that I'm I'm always using this and always staying at zero. It's the most valuable one, especially on solo self fun, but also on trade league. Very often, you will get like very very many good rewards. There was one league I got like 60 or 70 exalts worth of uniques from best series. Um, obviously I do play a lot, but, uh, I, I do always, after having videos about this, get like, Oh my God, Scizorian, I followed your advice and I got lucky this league. I won't get it every league, but it is by far the most worth one doing. If you are playing with friends, it can be very, very useful to save up your best year mechanic and rush through them together. Because if you find, for example, the split beast and both of you are in the map when you tag it, tag means attack it. Uh, like you can't call them in after having it on 10% for example, but you will both get it So what I will do when playing trailing is very often save up a bunch of missions and then run them together So that we're getting twice the amount of beasts um, And that can be very very good and then um, It actually double doubles when you're doing for example um, Say you find the spider then uh, you would get both the portals and then both the craft So if you're doing it with one friend you're getting four crafts Yes. Yeah, you're getting four crafts because you're getting two portals, uh, two portals. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it doubles it. It makes sense in my head. Uh, so it can be worth running it with friends. Yeah, you're only getting two uniques. But very, very good. And then technically the best way to craft, think about it, like, because the craft can be pretty expensive. But if you're running this, say you have a group of six running together, you're all getting six portals. And then you would get a 36 crafts total between all of you. Six crafts each. Um, so it's really, really nice and can give you a lot of money. Um, that's pretty much that. Do you have to try to like cover more things faster? Incursion was probably my favorite league, but only for a month and then I hated it. Um, it was, uh, it grew, grew very tedious very quickly. But Incursion is uh, Alva. You start encountering her in Act 7. I uh, probably should have mentioned you start encountering yet. beasts already in Act 2. But in Act 7, you will start encountering Alva, and she will start building a temple. Generally, in every zone you encounter Alva, there will be three of her, um, or rather three of the pillars that she has. And she will like take you back in the past. It's like time travel lore. It doesn't really matter. But more importantly, in the incursion, you will have a choice of going bottom left or top right. Now, if it is a special room, uh, top right will always be to upgrade it. And if it is bottom left, that will always be to change it. If it is like a, um, say it's just like a corridor room, then top right and bottom left will both be to change it. Um, there are some like notable rewards here. There are like several interesting, unique items that just um, drops from different rooms being level three. And there are ways to upgrade them by getting vials from the boss. Some of these are fairly strong. 
Um, and there are three very, very rewarding rooms. You have the Corruption Chamber being one of the only places you can get a double corruption. You can get it from some divination cards as well, but you can get a double corruption. This is a way riskier than a normal Vol Orb. It is a 25% chance that it is going to upgrade your item with two Implicits, so two corruptions. It is a 25% chance that all your sockets will turn white or that nothing will happen if the item does not have sockets. 25% chance! For the item to become rare and destroyed with influence or 25% chance to just completely vaporize your item. So it's basically 25% chance increased failure rate over a uh, normal Lalor. So more risk, more reward. Very, very cool. Something that I do hope we get a very rare orb for eventually in the game. Um, Alva as well. Like I know Baylor Mage has a very in-depth good like website that teaches a little bit more because takes a while to explain and we don't have that much time to explain ex exactly how to target farm for example a corruption chamber um but uh yeah it, I'd, I'd say check out Baylor Mage has like a website guide for that very very good in-depth explanation of how to target farm corruption chamber which you can uh but more importantly after 12 incursions Alva will open the map uh here and so currently if I did three more then I would get to enter this and you want to connect the rooms so you know sometimes you would maybe not have a connection here and then I couldn't access these rooms um sometimes they're not always worth doing you it's very very RNG still and uh sometimes you just get unlucky with what rooms you have like here you see I have a level three storm or corruption which adds a corrupting or radiating temples to the temple here I'll get loads of currency here I will be able to sacrifice an item uh, if I had level 3, it would do like any belt to any other belt, including different leagues. So, you know, a lot of the rooms are worth doing. Hall of Metal uh, is another one of the really, really good ones because you get a Legion Monolith in here. Uh, which has, they're obviously very rewarding and the splinters are quite expensive too, sometimes. Um, so those three are like the most worth to do. Um, and they're a very, very big map. There's quite a lot of experience in here. I think it's a very cool concept. One, I do hope that they do more. I think the boss is very boring. It's a vacuum cleaner, Roomba. Um, and I feel like there should be more. Like, there will be a mini boss in all of these rooms called an architect. I feel like, you know, maybe blood should start filling up in these and buff the boss in some way. It's, it's kind of a bit of a boring mechanic that they could have done more with, I feel. Um... Yeah, I guess it's kind of disappointing that it's a vacuum cleaner. But we must move on. Um, Delve is an infinite procedurally generated tunnel system. Um, for most intents and purposes, it is infinite. Obviously, nothing really is. Um, but Delve is a very, very cool system. Uh, and they recently did an Endless Delve League, which is very fun. But basically, there are loads and loads and loads of nodes. Loads of different cool rewards and several, I think, three different bosses with all their own rewards. Um, and you have to use the the yellow, the yellow juice here, Sulfite, to keep progressing down into the Delve. Um, and then you have to upgrade your Delve. Um... I generally will upgrade my Light Radius on both these two first. I don't care that much about the Darkness Resist. Because if I can keep these two topped up, then I'm, well, I ideally never taking darkness damage to begin with. Because I can just throw a flare. So I will always focus on, on these two, uh, then darkness resist next. I very rarely care about darkness resist. Um, but yeah, it is very, very, probably the single best thing they ever added to the game. Uh, I didn't like it in its initial form, but like so many things in Path of Exile, they do perfect it over time. Um, and, uh, you basically have to stand close to, like, this, like, crawler, which is, like, a, uh, thing that is putting down, uh, it's, like, sewing, sewing light beams into the ground, um, so that you can travel deeper and deeper, and it'll protect you from the darkness, and, uh, there are loads of rewards in here, uh, but, yeah, the most notable ones are Delve Fossils and the Resonators required to use them. Fossils, which we do cover quite a lot in the crafting ones, is uh, create your own crafting orb. Uh, so if you use one, I can do like prismatic fossil for more elemental modifiers. If I use aberrant and scorched, I can have that it will not allow me to have any cold or lightning modifiers, but it will be more fire and chaos. And we have covered that in depth in another lesson. But they are very, very strong for crafting and uh, 
pretty good experience. Cool, unique. You barely ever find the bosses, sadly. Um, but very worth doing. Huh. <sighs> And Soul Fight is now shared, and so is the mine. So if I die on this character, uh, this mine is shared between my future ones. You could actually level up from level 1, because you can gather Soul Fight on other characters. Technically, you don't need to do the campaign, but then you won't be allowed to do maps. Betrayal. Honestly, this one, and obviously, like, as you're sensing, the mechanics are getting longer and longer. This one, 100% needs my standalone video. We do have a very in-depth standalone video for this. Uh, it is simply not able to be covered in depth, but the TLDR from Act 9 onwards, you start encountering Betrayal. Um, and, uh, yeah, we do have it here. I think it's 40 minutes. 20 minutes. Oh, I managed to get it that short. That's actually pretty impressive. I'm, I'm proud of me. Uh, good job past this room. But either way, 20 minute video on Betrayal. Um, and you start getting Veiled Modifiers. Some of these are very, very strong, and it's a huge part of the crafting system. And you can see which ones you're missing here by scrolling down and where you get them from. So here is unveiling any generic weapon, and some of them will be like unveiling um, certain gloves or amulets from Vurichi, right? So you can just scroll down and see what you need. It will not tell you which ones have specific item level. Like, for example, it's tier 6 maps and higher for the trigger gems, uh, which is another popular unveil. Um, and it's just an incredibly valuable mechanic. This is, while it is incredibly important as a new player, it's at least important that you TLDR click to the right is probably like the most profitable option. Just keep clicking right if you don't want to like look into it. But it is a very, very powerful mechanic. Um, it can let you so much currency, scarabs, upgrades, unique items. Uh, and here we have the uh, final boss being Katarina. She betrayed us. And she also has very, very good rewards. Um, yeah. In incredibly, incredibly strong. Um, so even if it seems very daunting, I'd say it's the most complicated mechanic in Path of Exile. But sadly, this is a mechanic that is worth studying for. Uh, but yeah. Let's uh, continue with Synthesis. Now, not much of Synthesis remains in the game. It was a very comprehensive mechanic uh, with crafting... Fracturing items and synthesizing items and very, very in-depth mechanic. Very little of it is in the game now. Heist has both fractured and synthesized, synthesized items, but we do not craft them. We just find them. Um, fractured items is basically that a stat is permanent on the item. Um, the way that works is that it will be like uh, gold text. I wonder if I have any fractured crafting bases I can fish out here. Uh, in the future, I'm going to have actually even better... I wonder if I can search for Fractured. Yes, perfect. Uh, so here you can see that this one has uh, 4 to 5 gas speed and attack speed. This is actually one stat, and that is Fractured onto it. So if I scour this now, uh, and you'll see that I can augment and get life. And, and no, that's actually a pretty good one. But no matter what I do, I cannot remove that. Um, so there's nothing you can do to remove that stat. Which is very cool. They're very, very strong. Uh, some examples of this being very good, say you find a Karui Chopper or a Valax with Merciless or Tyrannical, the really, really high percentage physical damage roll, uh, fractured onto it. That is insanely strong for uh, crafting. Um, and there's another synthesis mechanic called Synthesis Implicits. There are some really, really... I uh, uh, wonder if I can search for synth. Uh, here is a Synthesized Crimson Jewel, which is 5% fire damage as an implicit. There are some very, very strong ones as well. There are basically free implicits uh, on a lot of them. And this is an implicit, so if you corrupt this, uh, that will remove it. And I believe the fracture doesn't get removed. If it, I don't know, maybe rerolling it with a Val does remove it. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, synthesized implicits are extremely powerful. Uh, some notable examples would be energy shield items can get more flat energy shield, being insanely strong. Um, weapons can get explosion, similar to the Crusader explosion mod. Um, and there's so many very, very strong ones there. There is another remnant of synthesis still left in the game, which is the synthesis bosses. They're very cool and very dangerous. We have um, Twisted Aesthete, Augmented Aesthete, and... There's one more. There's like fire, cold, and lightning. Oh, and physical. 
uh, and you also have a cortex. The uh, twisted one is death. It is insanely dangerous, very not well telegraphed, uh, and something I only do if I can build a pseudo immortal character built for that fight. So twisted, at least I avoid on hardcore. They're all very rewarding. They have insanely uh, rewarding rings. They have really cool gloves. Helmet can be interesting. And all of these uh, uniques also has um, implicits, synthesis implicits as well. Um, Cortex has so many expensive uniques that are uh, very, very good as well. A lot of us are hoping that synthesized com synthesizing items comes back in the future, but it would obviously have to be more friendly because it was a very punishing mechanic for people that didn't want a thesis on Path of Exile. Um, next up, but a very big mechanic, and uh, it would take me a long time to cover Legion jewels in depth, but let's talk about Legion. Legion is sort of uh, similar to Breach, where you, uh, in this time, you click this one, uh, loads of monsters appear, they are frozen in time, and the ones you kill will be unfrozen, and once the timer of the Legion ends, you get to fight them again, so you get to fight them twice, um, and they'll have loads of rewards. They drop splinters, similar to Breach, where um, after you have collected 100, you get an emblem. There is also loads of amazing League rewards. This is also where Incubators, uh, which is inspired directly by Pokemon Go uh, and the Pokemon Go uh, Incubator eggs. Uh, it's basically instead of walking, they will pop after a certain amount of kills, basically giving you uh, excitement for an item first. Like, oh, I dropped a Sixing Incubator and ooh, what Sixing will I get? Um, and, and like I said, the uniques are very, very cool. Now... Uh, the League mechanic is actually very, very good, smooth, and fun, enjoyable to interact with. Uh, the Monolith itself is, um, well, interesting. It's interesting. Um, it's insanely rewarding as well. And once you have 100 of these, you do get, uh, we can show you real quick. Um, it makes an emblem and you would put, you can put two three or four in and once you have done four it will give you this super map device which is very strong to put another well you can upgrade maps more basically with scarabs but you would um you could start with two being the easiest most people don't do two because they're not that rewarding and it puts you here and uh, you run into the middle and then you have to kill the boss over and over again ideally you want to build with really really high single target which this this build is actually very little damage in here and then let's say we killed him, then we would run over here uh, and kill Hyrie. And you just have to kill and kill over and over again. Um, with buffs I do, I guess, the one shot. But um, uh, you can see that like the monsters respawn every time I go into the middle. Um, and yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You just like kill things and uh, run into the middle. Now, the, the most rewarding part of the league, the Legion uh, Timeless Jewels, only drop from the bosses. Um, they... I almost want to say they only drop from in here, but that is not true. They have something like a one in a million chance to drop from a monolith. I've only seen it on video twice. That's how rare they are, that it's only been videoed twice. But unlike Breach Uniques, from uh, like the breach map bosses, this can actually happen. So it is worth mentioning. Um, and uh, you generally also only get the uh, Legion uniques in here, but they can and frequent, semi-frequently, well, I mean, it's pretty rare, uh, do drop from the, um, um, from the normal monoliths. Now, it is worth mentioning that both the bosses and normal monsters can drop the uniques. Like the uh, Asana's Chant, for example, being a very, very powerful glove that does an explosion. Um, this this area is like very, very easily abused with somebody using like a headhunter. And uh, yeah, the normal monsters cannot drop the timeless jewels in any way. Um, so normally... Oh yeah, it's Gentle Touch, not Chant, sorry. Gentle Touch is the glove. Uh, it is worth mentioning that it doesn't really matter to kill the normal monsters that much in here. I normally never bother with that. Uh, the main thing I care about is killing the bosses to try to get the Timeless Jewel. And the Timeless Jewel, uh, they are very, very interesting because they change your skill tree in multiple ways. 
which I don't really want to cover super in depth here uh, because of how complicated they are. But uh, we're gonna. It would be cool if one dropped. They didn't. No jewel dropped, but it's also. We did so few boss kills. Um, but uh, Lethal Pride and Glorious Vanity are some very expensive ones. Let's see if I have one that I can show as an example. I don't think that I do. Um, but it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Peewee, Glorious Vanity. Uh, so the way these work is that um, they will, for example, the Glorious Vanity said bathe it in the blood and then it'll pick a normal uh, random number between 100 and 8,000 and then it'll do either Awanu, Doriani, or Zubakwa. Now, if it's Doriani, all keystones that it touches with its radius will um, turn into the Corrupted Soul Keystone, which is very, very powerful, and we don't need to go into that. But actually, all of these three are powerful for their own reasons. Uh, this one, like 100 or 101, would be completely different and would change, uh, let's say like, let's say I place it here, then every node within would change, and it's completely different, uh, and the keystones don't stack. So if you thought you were being clever by putting it here and covering Elemental Equilibrium and Equilibrium, uh, sorry, Agnostic, you can't use two of it. No keystone in this game stacks. Uh, but that's the TLDR, that it changes uh, the nodes based on the number and the keystones based on the name. They're very powerful and Legion is well worth interacting with. Even if all you do is farm and sell the splinters because they're insanely worth. Uh, and obviously you want to have a powerful build. Blight! Tower Defense in Path of Exile. Um, it was a very, very intense mechanic and is a lot better now that it's core than uh, having to wait for Blight. Uh, currently, a hot tip is you can anoint your rings with the, uh, I think it's uh, blue and purple or something. Uh, you can look up what ring anoints um on the wiki as well uh but i normally do the uh scout tower range scout tower range uh which is teal and violet this is uh very very um strong um and very very cheap some people like meteor towers they're a lot more expensive and you don't need them because scout towers can solo tier 16s uh but it's yeah tower defense in path of exile um, it's like balloons, very popular in Twitch right now as well. Um, and then you just have to make sure that the monsters do not get to the, um, to the, uh, thing itself. So, um, here we do get to learn about anoints. And, um, anoints are basically, you get to, uh, use different oils in Path of Exile to, um, allocate a notable which are these things, so like Tireless, Escalation, Barbarism. Uh, we have done Martial Experience, which is here. Uh, and it means that you get this notable. It doesn't stack. I couldn't like path here and take it twice. Uh, nothing really stacks in Path of XL like that. But it means that I can get here without tra traveling here with skill points. So it's very, very strong because it means that what if I really need Arcane Swiftness on a build, but I'm all the way down here. That means that I can get it without traveling there. You can hold alt on the in-game skill tree and it will show what it costs. Um, so that's really, really good. And uh, the oils are level required. So for example, if we look here at the oils dash tab, gold oils are for example only in tier 13s and higher. I think silvers is like tier 11 or 12, 10 ish. And they like, you know, they get more and more common. You can upgrade them. You can sell, the, sell them to the vendor to upgrade if you don't have these tabs. So like, is it three opalescence is one silver? Um, or you could just upgrade them in the tab here uh, as you please. Um, and uh, you can anoint rings, you can anoint blight maps. So for example, um, especially when you have a solid build, a lot of people use either teal oils um, or crimson oils, especially in higher tiers. Like I would never do a tier 13 without three crimsons on it because you get better tests. Yeah, you get a lot more better chests. Um, early on, especially if you're on a weaker build and you feel like you're struggling, Amber Oils are insanely strong. They do give you more pack size and 60% reduced cost of building. So with this, you can just spam Scout Towers, making it more easier for you to um, defeat them out. Um, 
Let's see. And uh, yeah, very, very... There are hidden annoyances as well that only appear in Path of Building. Um, I'll whip out Path of Building real quick just to show that. Um, I don't think that's explained in-game at all, to the best of my knowledge. Um, I, I can't think of that being explained at all. But for example, this one, Tranquility is Azure and Gold Gold Oil. You can't see it in-game, uh, and it is anoint only. Yeah, I don't know if it's explaining him at all. But either way, that is the TLDR for Blight Maps. And like in maps, it'll be a lot smaller than the Blight Map itself. The Blight Map is kind of bad experience. And loads and loads of cool uniques like this. It's very, very expensive. If you find this, very expensive. Worth a lot. Metamorph. Um, probably the thing I want out of the game the most. Um, and, uh, this mechanic was made solely from, I'm pretty sure Neon just wanted players to die a lot more. He felt like players weren't dying enough and he wanted, uh, to kill more of us, especially on Hardcore for good rip compilations. Um, nothing in this has been balanced in any way. Um, there is like 11 different mods that will just outright kill you even to this day, even after it's gone core. Some being like Soul Barrage, Horror Barrage, you're probably just better off staying away from any mod. Um, that says Barrage, but if you look at these here, these all will say these, so that one might say Horror Barrage, this one might say Soul Barrage, this one might say Volatile Crawlers, that one was nerfed, surprisingly, um, and so on, right? They'll have, like, different, uh, mods that they will have, they'll also have different rewards, um, they can give you six things, they can give you a lot of, like, cool, um, quick, Quick thing I saw in chat, somebody asked about does Ring Annoying stack? Yes, they do. Uh, but either way, they're very, very like good rewards. So like this one would give you a unique. Sometimes it will do a guaranteed 60 unique. And it is a very rewarding mechanic. It also gives you catalysts, which is like quality, additional quality for rings and amulets and belts. Now, this quality also, um, like normal quality, uh, do I have... I don't know where I have catalysts in this league, actually. Maybe it's actually in... I normally keep them here, but I don't have them here. And I don't think I have them in the tab. Maybe I just don't have any. Oh, no way. I have a special tab. I hate this. Either way, they work the same as the normal ones. Whereas if you put it on a white ring before you craft it, maybe you're about to craft a shaper ring and you know that you're very, very dedicated to making this uh, a good ring. You could put on the life catalyst uh, and only use 4 instead of using 20 when it is finished crafted. Um, do remember that there are some of these that remove quality. So for example, an Exalted or an Annulment will remove 20% when you use it. Uh, augments will reduce 2% and a Regal remove 5%. And the Special Orbs as well will remove 20%. Uh, some ways to bypass this uh, is like Bestiary using like the uh, Annul and Exalt here does not remove quality. Uh, Leo in Research from Betrayal has Exalted Orbs that do not remove quality, and there are some ways like that to get around it. Um, but the quality is very, very strong. Um, there's some extremely rare, uh, League-specific uniques, like the, um, Projector. What's it called? Something Projector, Wisp Projector? I don't know. But there's, like, some cool rings. I've never had it, but there's some, uh, uniques that are specific to Metamorph. Astral Projector. Um, and then... Once you fill up this bar in a map, you will get a additional body part, um, which will be like part of a bigger metamorph that you can go into Thane's laboratory and, and make like a super metamorph. These are extremely easy. I don't think I've ever seen anyone die to them because they do not have map mods and they do not scale well in any way. So you should probably never die to this. They should, you should probably never die to these. These are extremely easy, but, uh, you know, depends on your build. Um, either way, the map ones are pure death. You will notice a large amount of hardcore players completely skip them, especially thanks to Heist shitting out all of the metamorph rewards to the point where you never need to do it at all. Um, but yeah, pretty interesting league mechanic. And we might have to go a little bit over time on this because it's... How many sides do we have left? Oh! There's so many big mechanics at the end. Delirium! A lot of people's most popular league mechanic and uh, with a few changes would definitely be the best thing they ever put in the game. Delirium 
is a uh, mirror like you see there in the top right that you just run through and it has the smoothest way to engage with the league mechanic ever. You run through that mirror and now you're part of the league mechanic. It will give you a, uh, a bar in the bottom left that will start filling up and, um, and that will um, uh, give you more rewards depending on how many monsters you kill. Um, some players don't like that there's a timer on it, like the, the fog will come after you, so if you're slow, then you won't get that many rewards because you won't be able to kill that many monsters inside of the fog, but, uh, you do get the rewards at the end once you run through this mirror. Uh, much to the dismay of streamers, if you use a delirium orb, uh, which I should be able to show you here. Uh, if you use a delirium orb on a map, um, that will... It'll show like this. It'll then be delirium, reward type gems, armor, etc. Uh, and the map is 40% delirious. It'll make it a lot more rewarding, a lot harder. But you will drop the rewards as each bar fills up. Now, a big problem with that for streamers is obviously people will be like, Hey, Mr. Broadcaster, you forgot your rewards in the map. Do remember, you get your rewards underway. The delirium never ends. There is nothing coming at the end once you're actually doing a delirium infused map. Um... Some downsides to Delirium, it can be fairly dangerous, and they decided that even though Path of Exile is hard for colorblind people, they decided, fuck everybody with eyes, we're gonna put grey on grey with some more grey, and regardless if you're colorblind or not, you just won't be able to see what is happening. It can also be fairly laggy for a lot of players, but it is insanely rewarding and the best, one of the best ways to make currency. So, pretty cool league, and uh, this is another league with splinters. You get uh, special Delirium splinters, and um, uh, once you have a hundred of these, wait, it's 300, right? I always forget. I'm pretty sure it's 300. It's 300. Um, they kept like, I feel like they kept changing that or what they wanted to do with that. But either way, uh, once you have 300 Simulacrum Splinter, you get to enter a, a Simulacrum, which is a alternate town uh, that goes up to 20 waves of just fighting these monsters. They get harder and harder. It's very well done. Very cool. The entire mechanic honestly just needs a few polishes and is mwah, perfect. They've done really well. It has so many cool uniques. Uh, something worth mentioning with the special uniques. There are some, very few, um, that can be dropped from the bosses. Like some of the, uh, some unique uh, jewels and stuff can be dropped from bosses. But there are some that are from Simulacrum only. And you can only get one Simulacrum unique. So, for example, if you get a, um, if you get the chest, I'm sure somebody will remind me what the chest is called in a second. Uh, but if you get one of the, uh, unique, uh, glorious chest in a Simulacrum, uh, perfidy, you cannot get the most sought after thing, voices. There's only one, uh, unique per, no matter what you do. So, um, voices is a really, really expensive cluster jewel, which, we're we'll talk more about cluster jewels, I guess, but a uh, very expensive cluster jewel, uh, and it's worth a shit ton, and that's why most people do simulacrums. And uh, there are loads of other rewards too, and generally bosses, you're guaranteed a boss by wave 15, I think the earliest I've had it, which is quite rare, is 8 or 9, uh, and you can get them as early as like 11 or 12 more commonly, but you are guaranteed one by either 13 or 15. Um, so yeah, uh, very, very cool with the Simulacrum, but uh, Delirium also brings us to another thing, which is Cluster Jewels. And Cluster Jewels is basically expanding your skill tree and custom crafting your skill tree. One of the coolest things, probably harder, uh, hardest possible thing that they could possibly have added to balance, but very, very interesting that you can like custom craft your own skill tree. Um, it's very in-depth and you basically have to look it up on each one what you can craft. But, you know, there's something for everything. There's for summoners, for casters, for melee. Um, and there's like a slightly overpowered build called an aura stacker that you can make with these. Um, very, very cool mechanic. Honestly, one of the best builds. Sorry, one of the best leagues they ever done. One of the most fun things for the game. There's so many cool things here. Um, and a lot of cool uniques. Just honestly, very well done league. The only thing that ruined it for me was performance. Um, Harvest, also one of my favorite leagues, um, and Harvest, we are most likely not going to talk about this a lot. We're, it's a crafting league. 
Uh, the reason we're not going to talk about this a lot is because we don't know what they're doing with it. It is coming live now in 3.13 and I will most likely, well, it'll be updated for next semester. But it's a big crafting league, some cool, some cool unique items, loads of cool um, extra stuff. We don't know what's coming, so I don't want to waste time talking about it when it's, we're going to find out. Well, we'll most likely have to play it, so we'll find out on the 15th of January. Hopefully they'll tell us about it in the trailer tomorrow as well. Um, but it's very, very powerful crafting. Heist! Heist is going core. We don't know what is going core. Um, but we do want to talk a little bit about Heist anyway. Heist has um, contracts, blueprints, a bunch of henchmen. Hopefully they will rework this mechanic quite a lot. But the coolest thing from Heist is um, they are... They have uh, gems, like special gem quality. They have replicas of unique items that are really cool. Um, and they are the coolest rewards they've added to a league in a long time. To the point where it didn't really need its own... Uh, it didn't really need its, like, shitting out every other league's mechanic uh, in rewards. I feel like they have so much, like, cool specific loot that that was enough to carry it. Um, they're also experimenting with a very, very interesting mechanic called smart loot, which makes that the loot makes a lot more sense. Instead of you finding like a, uh, a weapon with percentage LA damage uh, uh, or like damage for spells and crit chance for melee, it'll be more like, hey, this makes sense. Like somebody could have crafted this. So it's basically just like loot that makes more sense is smart loot. Um, which is part of what they want to do with, they want to cut down the amount of shit that drops in the game and make loot more exciting to find. Um, but yeah, uh, honestly, not a bad mechanic with some polish. It is very tedious. I think for a lot of players, it was fun for two to four weeks. Uh, and then they're like, I am done with opening doors. It was fun with all the rewards. It's fun with all the replicas and gems, um, and stuff like that. But, uh. We are most likely going to wait with covering Heist in depth uh, until um, until we know exactly how it's going core. Currently, as the TL they are, you have to use one coin for no reason to go into the Rogue Harbor. Um, and once you're in the Rogue Harbor, you can run your contracts or your Grand Heists. Uh, so contracts or blueprints. And you have to level up all these people. It takes a long time. I have most of them at five, sadly, which means I've spent way too much time. But uh, yeah, you can level them up. You can gary them. And not all of this is bad in practice, but I do hope they make it a lot less tedious when having it core. Um, it's also way too rewarding as a mechanic, which takes a lot away from other aspects of the game. Um, a lot of dangerous traps and stuff. But yeah, this is something I, I want to cover more in a future one. Um, honestly... We don't really have time for a Q&A. I might, next time I do this, I might do two and a half or three hours and cover it slightly more in depth. But it's already a very long episode and we're going to get ready for, um, we're going to get ready for the mapping session here. It's very hard to cover all of the leagues and stuff for Path of Exile quickly. Uh, but do remember you can look through with the, um, you can look through with the we're going to highlight it each section on youtube um so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode covering every league mechanic obviously this is one we're going to be updating every single time and making sure it is updated and we'll probably do it longer and then just have like the section so you can click on the ones you need um if you are enjoying these lessons one great way to support them is to buy a token t-shirt if you enjoy them and other than that you can sub to the youtube if you like my content not gonna force you thanks for watching hope you guys enjoy it and uh try to die less than i do <laughs>